half the price and twice as nice. This is the Jouet 17 mount, and it is in fact less than half the price of the leading competitor, the wildly popular AM5 mount. In today's video, I'm going to be putting it to the test to see how well this mysterious mount compares. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. So here's the listing I purchased from on AliExpress. This mount seemingly isn't sold locally by any retailers, it can only be bought from overseas. Our point of comparison for this video shall be the AM5 mount, which you can buy from local retailers for £2,000, or the newer model, the AM5N mount, for a little over £2,000. These are fantastic mounts, I adore them. There are links to each of my review videos of them in the description below. But here we have a mysterious newcomer, available for less than half the price of the industry standard. Now more often than not, in these circumstances, it's very easy to come to the almost obvious conclusion that there must be something massively wrong with it. Otherwise, why else is it so cheap? But at the risk of spoiling the rest of the video, there isn't anything wrong with it. In fact, it works incredibly well. Its performance easily rivals that of an AIM-5N. It does fall short in a few areas, but overall it's a 5.5 kilogram mount that can take payloads of 13 kilograms without a counterweight and payloads up to 18 kilograms with a counterweight, which is enough to make any of us excited. Also, a little footnote, but until Tuesday, AliExpress are doing a big Black Friday deal that means you can get huge discounts. In this particular case, the discount removes expensive shipping and takes the overall pre-import tax cost to under £800, which is insane value, especially when you consider that if you're looking for a cheap go-to mount, then these are the current three most popular options. I'm not sure it needs to be mentioned, but these mounts all need to use counterweights in order to properly balance the load. Strain wave mounts like the Jouet 17 and the AM5 don't have to worry about this to a certain degree. Also, this part will mean more to some than others, but look at that, you get a choice of colours. It's not often you see that in astrophotography gear. This obviously doesn't affect the performance, it's not like when you're a kid and you have the superstition that the red one will go faster and the blue one is quieter at night, but still, it's nice to have the choice, and given I am currently being loaned the red AM5N mount, let's mix it up a little and make the difference between them even more stark. Now this is a deeper look at the specifications of the mount. So it's not just the appearance that's similar to the AM5, the specs are almost the same. The key most noticeable difference is that the payloads with and without counterweights differ ever so slightly between the three options. The ZWO AM5 mounts come with a very handy app that lets you control the mount, but as it turns out, the Jouet 17 also has an app that you can control it with. It's very basic, but I am sure as most of you will agree, you'd prefer not to control the mount directly over Wi-Fi. Instead, you can use the USB cable to plug it into a computer or perhaps the ASI Air which does accept this mount. So as of right now, everything is going swimmingly. Hats off to the Jouet 17. It's half the price, yet just as good. So where are its faults? Well, this is the first significant difference that I noticed between the mounts. It's not entirely a deal breaker, but there's no additional power supply port. This has always been super handy as it's meant that you can plug in one power cable to the mount and then distribute some of the power to other devices such as your ASI Air or your camera. Instead, I find myself having to plug in an additional power supply to support my ASI Air or Astro Station. In fact, I'm sure some of you are going to curse at me now, but the longer I have this mount, the braver I'm getting with it. So the other night, I had everything powered through one power supply cable that went directly into the Astro Station, and then additional power cables were fed from the Astro Station to the Jouet 17 and my TubeTech camera. That is generally a big no-no. But it worked absolutely fine, and I believe this might be the reason. The Jouet 17 is quiet like suspiciously quiet. It's already happened on multiple occasions where I've set the mount up to polar align it, and as I've watched my phone tell me the mount is slewing, my ears believe otherwise because I can't hear a thing. It turns out the Jouet 17 is naturally capped at 2.6 degrees slew speed, which is slower than the max speed of the AM5, which can go all the way up to 6 degrees per second. Apparently this can be changed if you are particularly fussed about it, but I suspect that's the reason the Astro Station was able to supply power through the entire night, because the max current rating of the Jouet 17 stepper motor board is 1.2 amps, and the max output of the Astro Station is 3 amps. I'm not advising you power your mount via your mini Astro PC, I'm just sharing with you the fact that I managed to do so and it went very smoothly. So that's my biggest issue so far with the Jouet 17, no additional power ports for your other devices, which all things considered isn't the end of the world, since this isn't the reason you're buying a mount. You're interested in this mount because you want its help to track the rotation of our night sky. So now, let's answer the £800 question. 
How well does the Jouet 17 mount track? As I mentioned before, the mount works perfectly fine with the SI Air. In fact, I'm pretty sure it works with everything. I've seen verified reports of it working with the Sky Safari Pro 7 and the Stellarium Plus mobile apps via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and with Nina, Stellamate, and of course the Astro Station. So it's widely compatible, which is great to hear. The go-to, plate solving and centering, is a very swift and successful process. So as far as slewing towards and finding the objects goes, top marks. The question is how much tracking data provides a good insight into the capabilities of the mount. Sure, sellers can post screenshots of excellent tracking scores, but every mount can have a perfect minute or so. Hmm, let's find out. The total weight of my rig is six kilograms. I'm taking 0.5 second exposures for my guiding and five minute long exposures with my main camera. I'm using a TubeTech off-axis guider with a QHY585 Mark III as a guide camera and the TubeTech ATR2600C IMX571 camera as my main. Sheesh, if you don't really have an interest in astrophotography, that really was just a bunch of nonsense. Basically, this is a powerful astrophotography setup with a total weight of 14 kilograms, which is bloody amazing. Believe it or not, that would be considered by most to be a lightweight rig. Now when judging the tracking capabilities of a mount, we can use lots of different measurements as a basis for our understanding. In this case, we're going to be focusing on the total RMS, which stands for the root mean square. This value is calculated from the adjustments made to the right ascension, RA, and the declination, deck. Basically, our setup is going to focus on a particular star and make sure it stays in the same position throughout this tracking process. To do so, it will need to make adjustments to the up-down and left-right movements of the star's position. The smaller the corrections needed will indicate a better tracking job done and will ultimately lead us to having more precise and pinpoint stars in our images, which is what we are all hoping for. It's a tricky thing to be good at because stuff like light pollution, clouds, moonlight can all have significant effects on this value. So to give you a general consensus of what's good with this particular rig, here is a scale for what constitutes a good or bad RMS value. Anything higher than four is a big yikes. Somewhere between four and two is below average. If you're getting values of roughly 1.5, then yeah, that's considered an average value. But around about one would be above average. And if you can get somewhere around 0.7, then that would be amazing. It is possible to get values lower than this, such as 0.3, and if it does, your reaction should be, shut up and take my money. Right, so for the price that we're paying, I'm expecting to see RMS values of about 2. But given that the screenshots used to advertise this product show values of 0.38, I'm expecting a little bit more. In order to auto guide, here is my camera setup. I know people have their own issues with off axis guiders and the QHY585 isn't necessarily a guiding camera, but let's see how it fares against the Seven Sisters when capturing five minute long exposures. And obviously, as is tradition, for the first frame that I've captured has had a massive satellite trail pass through the middle of it. Right, so that's 10 minutes worth of tracking with this rig. 1.5 to 1.6 seems to be the average value, which is fine. I can work with that. But since this was actually my first time trying out the TubeTech off-axis guider, I wanted to make sure this tracking test was as fair as possible. The screenshots posted alongside the product page have led me to believe that I can still do a lot better. So I swapped the off-axis guiding rig for an ASI 2600 MC Duo which has the same sensor as the TubeTech ATR2600C, but it also includes a guiding sensor alongside it. And check out the guiding numbers with this camera. 5 mover numbers. Look at that, we're bordering take my money numbers. So now that we've got some good data to compare, let's look at the best and worser case scenarios. I'm not gonna say worst, because the worst case scenario is if it does something silly like this. I don't think you can complain about those numbers, it certainly tracks as well, if not better, than my AM5N mount. Which brings me to my conclusion. You've clicked this video under the pretense that I've reviewed this mysterious mount and found it to be half the price, yet twice as good. Well, after using it for the last month, I can now answer this question. Question. It is in fact half the price and almost as good. It's certainly not better than the M5 mount, but it is astonishingly similar. It's easy to see straight from the off where they've managed to slice off the fat compared to the AM5 mount. There's no carry case for starters. The app interface is severely limited. In fact, let's make a comprehensive list of all the pros and cons. Feel free to add your own remarks to this in the comments below. 
So perhaps the biggest pro of them all is £800, which is basically $1,000. It's a silent beast. You can't even really tell that it's tracking. It's just that quiet. There are several stylish colors to choose from which is wonderful because who doesn't love a bit of variance? It's capable of supporting payloads of up to 13 kilograms without a counterweight and 18 kilograms with the support of a counterweight. It does also include a counterweight bar, a dual saddle for Vixen and Losmandy style dovetails and built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It works with Solarium Plus on your phone or tablet via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And more importantly, it works with Nina. It works with Stellamate. It works with the Astro Station and it works with the ASI Air. But as for the cons, there's no carry case, the app's super basic, there's no power supply, which I can only assume companies do this because it's too much hassle to try and specifically include a power adapter that fits your region's plugs. There's no instructions whatsoever, so good luck. <laughs> it's not that complex, but a little booklet of instructions always adds a bit of comfort, especially on a product like this. There's no counterweights included, just the bar, and the max slowing rate is 2.6 degrees per second which can be seen as a downer, but I really don't think that's the end of the world, given how disturbingly quiet the mount is as a result. Now, I've never once felt the need to explicitly state this, but I purchased this product with my own money. My opinions in this video are solely my own and are not in any way influenced by anyone else's. I have zero idea who even makes a Jouet 17 mounts. They have in no way reached out to me and asked me to review their product. I also have to now mention that I have not been bought out by leading market competitors who also make strain wave mounts, such as Skywatcher and ZWO, into not making a review video on the Jouet 17 mount or into saying negative things about it. So there's no need for conspiracies. I appreciate a lot of you are very keen on seeing how this mount performs but I'm not about to rush out a review video after testing it for only one night. This is very much an under-reviewed product, and I'd be doing you all a huge disservice if my review of it wasn't comprehensive. I've had the opportunity to use the mount now on nine different occasions and counting, and I'm happy to report it gets the thumbs up from me. My personal experience so far has been very positive. I actually have to return my AM5 mount very soon back to ZWO, as they only wish to loan it to me for a review. Which is a shame, but I can rest assured that I will still be in good hands, knowing I will still have this Jouet 17 mount. My final thoughts are, it's a great value mount that can provide excellent value for money by being more than a thousand pounds cheaper than the nearest competitor. I'd feel more comfortable if I could have seen more reviews on the mount from other people before making my purchase, especially on an item having to be delivered from China. But hey, it all worked out fine, and now at least you have this video to use as a reference for yourself. If you do go ahead and purchase the mount, let me and thousands of other interested astrophotographers know about your experience in the comments below it would be hugely appreciated. Thanks for watching, I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.